Hey, Brent. Mike, how are you? I am hanging in there. Yeah, same. So it's still where you are, where you have been forever. Uh, yeah, I mean, stuff keeps shifting around me, but I'm still around. Anybody else coming today? Do you know? Oh, no idea. No idea. Ennis will just want to scrub a non creds one, <laughs> but I can't. We should. No, we honestly should. Because I don't know anybody besides you know who that's actually using it. Um, technically, there are some former Everdom customers who are still using it, um, but I, yeah, I like the revocation just doesn't work. And they keep finding more and more holes with it. So, yeah, I mean, and just in the, in the first place, it's not secure. I mean, like if we wanted to use an RSA based solution that is more secure, then we're going to need to up the the size of everything. Which is yeah. a conversation you, me, Dimitri, and Jason Lauder had in like 2016 or 2017 yeah. or something like that. Yep. Like, well, okay, we really should up up a non creds. I wrote prototypes for that with 4K instead of 2K, remember? <laughs> right, yeah. But we were like, eh, you know, by the time by the time we you know, we shouldn't disrupt our current customer base and make them redo everything. Okay, should have. And by the time it really matters, you know, we'll all be on something else anyway. We're not yet. <laughs> yeah yeah well that's why I've, i kind of said all right let's move to a non-creds 2.0 i've been kind of doing that <laughs> so trying to get that going but we'll see honestly that effort's going really slow too yeah that's surprising so I mean, I'm having a hard time being motivated to work on anything with Ursa related because there's so much legacy bloat. Yeah, I mean, we had a good push briefly to, but like, like the uh, PR, uh, what is it, 224? I don't know. It's like, it's good. It's a good PR. It updates things, changes a lot of stuff, but there's one line in it that's currently pointing to like uh, like Dalek needs to be like Dalek needed to be updated basically it's a reference to Dalek and Dalek got updated but it's been like two months and no update on the PR so I'm like I I can't approve it yet because it's still pointing to a personal branch of Dalek instead of the updated one. And I don't have, I don't, I mean. Is Dalek at, at 3.0 now or 2.0? I, I think they just went to 2.0. Oh, but it like, finally I mean, got released? Because last time I looked, it was still at pre. <laughs> um, I thought it was officially out. Maybe not. I'm looking now. Because that was my, no, it still says one. Huh. Okay, maybe not. But anyway, I don't know. I mean, honestly, the two hours a week I spend on Ursa is more than I can afford to spend at this point. <laughs> my problem is I, well, I'm freeing up some of my time, but I have a hard time justifying it because it's so bloated and no company I work for has 
cares about Hyperledger at all. And that's the problem. Yeah. So I don't know what to do about it. So it's hard to justify it. I mean, if Ursa said, hey, all code will be audited, I'd be like, oh yeah, I could donate a lot because then I can get the free audit, right? So, but Hyperledger is not ponying up anything for it. So, and the, the only project I know that's kind of still going is Fabric. Are you, I think there's a meeting later today. Is it today? Yeah, it was Sean. Yeah. I mean, that's, that'll be the time to, to get that question answered. Like, Yeah, because I mean, like, heart never comes anymore. Well, no one, ever since Sovereign dissolved and Evernim, like, kind of limped along, Ursa's had no, almost no activity, really. Yeah. Yeah, and so. the Aroha folks showed up and were like, hey, we want to make this better. I'm like, that sounds awesome. Let's do that. But, uh, and we're just kind of stuck. Were, I think they were surprised at how much uh, uh, active participation there was or how little. Yeah, it's pretty much died. I mean, I was doing most of the work before when I was at Sovereign. And then since I left Sovereign, it's had little to no action at all. Yeah. yeah, the pieces that people are using, people are satisfied to keep using. I mean, I would have, I mean, I already have a non-creds too working in a separate repo. I'm just hesitant to donate it. <laughs> So I don't know. I mean, I probably get some good feedback. I just don't know. That's hard to say. Well, so, I mean, if you could do anything right now, what would it be? <laughs> Uh, related like to this, what? Related to this project, what would you do with it? Um, I would assign resources to update the BBS implementation so that it is more in line with the work that's happening at IARTF. Um, it's just become bloated, man. That's why I gave up on it. I wouldn't use BBS plus period. I, I mean, and there I, are constraints under which most companies operate that require them to care about things like standardization. Some. So I'm not swayed by the pure cryptographic concerns. Like, yeah, I get it. There are smaller and better signatures out there that are. It's not, it has nothing to do with smaller per se, it's just the pure bloat that's come along with it. So, but I mean, quite frankly, Brent, every company I talk to, none of them want to use a non -creds. not one. If anything, Polygon IDs uh, implementation is going to win and the non -creds will just fade into the background. A non -creds won? Totally agree. No, the non creds too. I think it's going to die as well because Polygon um, yeah. ID, every every company I talk to is adopting Polygon ID because it's going into production. The system is easy for them to understand. It's based on open standards. So they're all going to use it. Yeah, we'll see. All of the companies that I talk to are banking on JSON web proofs and BBS. Uh, hmm. And when you have somebody like, Ping identity and somebody like Microsoft saying that, I think that holds a little bit more weight than Polygon ID. Like well, Polygon ID might have some really slick stuff, but. Well, I'm, the companies I'm talking to are all Web3 companies. Not a single one wants to use BBS Plus. They kind of look at it and go, eh, why would we use this when we can use Polygon ID? Right, and that's fine for Web3. But 
I mean, I, one thing that was not clear to me while Evernib was in its heyday was how utterly fringe most of the Web3 stuff is. It's not as fringe as you might think, having spent the last four years in it. I mean, that's just it. You're in it. The view from outside is a little bit different. Yeah, I get that. But I think from what I, from my point of view, it, that gap is narrowing. So I'll be surprised if BBS Plus, I mean, it'll probably find some market just because it's getting standardized, but Polygon ID is like Coinbase is going to adopt it and they've got quite a bit of weight, Binance, Trust Wallet, Horizon Labs, Lit Protocol. I mean, all of them are looking at Polygon ID. So yeah, I looked at the Polygon stuff. It looks pretty slick, but. Oh, my biggest gripe with it is based on Groth 16. <laughs> so that's a problem. So, like, one company wants to replace it with a different type of Stark, that, but they can't justify the the lift, even though it's a better proving system. If, but you know, other than a different proving system, there's no new, uh, you know, offerings from it, right? So you go, okay, we just replaced it with instead of Gross sixteen, we're using Starks. It runs fifty times faster, but that's it, right? No new functionality, nothing. So, and because it's, you know, Starks are so large, they can't justify the on-chain uh, requirements. So now they're just back to square one. So I don't know. From a web, okay, so let me put it this way. From a web three perspective, maybe Polygon ID is the winner. So what do you classify BBS plus then? And the non credits group, isn't that also considered web three? No. No, when you're, when you have companies like Microsoft that are building solutions on top of the Jose stack and OIDC, that's, that's pretty much as far from web three as you can get. But they're using BBS plus. Yeah. With OIDC. Mm -hmm. The OID for VC spec is damned clever. They took the, the traditional OIDC three party model and made yeah. it so that one of the parties is the holder's wallet. Mm -hmm. So I'm still authorizing a relying party to obtain information from whatever they call it, the, the provider, but the provider is under my control. It's just my wallet. So instead of, so they've taken the, this is OIDC, it's always phone home. They've split it mm -hmm. in two. So on one hand, I'm the rely or my wallet is the relying party and I'm getting access, you know, for my wallet to gain information from the issuer. And on the other side, I'm allowing the verifier to obtain information from my wallet. It's it's converted it into a fully SSI like two party system. It's brilliant. And it has all the people who are already using OIDC going, okay, cool. Instead of going, what's DIDCOM? Yeah. A big fan so of DIDCOM. like they're building <laughs> on top of that. They have they have what they're calling selective disclosure jots, which aren't awesome, but it's essentially the you know, the hash-based selective disclosure systems where you only reveal the, you know, it's salted hashes. So I can reveal yep. things or not, but you only ever see the salted hash values unless I'm revealing the information, which doesn't prevent, prevent you know, doesn't help with unlinkability, doesn't prevent correlation, but 
honestly, BBS LD signatures or whatever it's called now doesn't really help with that either. No, it doesn't. Because they got rid of holder binding. They got rid of, they, I mean, the way that the end quads are canonicalized, you're revealing identifiers right and left. Yep. So, you know, from a from a purely able to track information perspective, it doesn't. I'm BBS LD side of things seems marginally better, maybe, than <laughs> SD Jot with a plain ED two fifty five nineteen signature on top of it. But tell yep. you what, one of those is a hell of a lot easier to implement and convince big people to implement than the yep. other one. And oh, yeah. in the same vein, JSON Web Proofs is, you know, gaining a lot of momentum. One thing that I've been impressed with, like, I've done W3C for a long time now. Um, ITF, there's a lot less politics and a lot more expertise. Yeah. Like people I come in and go, you know, I am a cryptographer and this is what I see going on here or. I have built systems using these things for decades now. And here's, you know, here's my concerns. Here's my question. It's like just the, the whole, you know, seeking to understand questioning aspect of it, you know, leads to, seems to lead to better things. Yeah. Anyway, so, so with Jason web proofs, you have a Jose affiliated data Ooh. structure. I'm looking at the Jose web proof. Whoever wrote that has got PS signatures in it too. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's legit. Got Mercurial signatures in there. Yes. It's mm. compatible with all of those things. And it doesn't have opinions about it because it's just the data structure. So with JWP and OID for VCs, I have like, the I have pieces of the puzzle that the federated identity people are find acceptable, and they still run the identity game. Well, and the fact that I can still see P, the fact that they have PS signatures in there, I'm game, <laughs> right? Yeah, That's all I, mean, I care yeah. about. I mean, it's like, and the only reason BBS is going to have a foothold is because it's going to be the first signature that's standardized enough for companies to use with JWP. It's not going to be the last one. Yeah. But it's going to but it's going to be it's just like okay, I've got a jot. How is my jot signed? Well, the jot will tell me how it's signed, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, there's issues with that. Algnon obviously bad, but the fact that 10 years ago jots were signed with something different than they're signed with now and they kind of like the jot still exists even though oh it used to be signed with an rsa signature and now it's signed with you know ecdsa or ed25519 yeah. or eddsa or just like it doesn't matter yeah, like it doesn't matter i can swap out which ones i need to use or can use having a another data structure that you can do the same thing with i think is going to be it's going to be awesome. We're going to be like, oh, BBS has a vulnerability. Okay. Functional Sanders. Let's do it. Yep. Morning. Morning. Oh, just, I, yeah. don't, I see, I see a lot of promise there. And I also, it's hard to underestimate the impact that larger players have on the space. Yeah. You know, for so sure. I would love, honestly, I would love for the Web3 vision to take hold and for, you know, the worldwide impacts that, that are potentially there to be realized. But I don't know, maybe I'm just too cynical. <laughs> you know, well, I've, I've seen it, I've seen it used for fraud and for grift far more often than I've seen it to change the world or attempt to change the world. Even some of the more dreamy Dow stuff that I've seen has been like borderline fraud. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I I don't blame you. This you is know, why like, like bigger companies, you know, like Coinbase, for example, 
are having to up their uh, KYC, right? Yeah. So it'll yeah. be it'll be interesting. You know, I still I'm still mildly concerned that we're you know fashioning the tools that'll be used to create the perfect dystopia. <laughs> I just fail to see how Ursa can contribute to any of this stuff now. Yeah, it's it didn't it hasn't grabbed hold of of people's I don't I was like people just don't see it as a place to go to get something. I honestly wonder if I should donate a lot of the go code of cryptography I wrote and then because I feel like more people are prone to adopt that than Rust, personally. Yeah, I mean, Rust is great. I love Rust, but... Oh, don't get me wrong. I love Rust, but no one else does. <laughs> Seems like the only companies writing Rust are those writing cryptography and uh, web stuff like Cloudflare has tried to get me. And they're doing tons of stuff in Rust. It's not even cryptography related. Cloudflare is so. doing a lot of cool stuff, period. Yeah. Did you see their real world crypto thing? No. I haven't uh, been to real world crypto since I left Sovereign, unfortunately. It was. I've seen two projects they're doing, but I haven't seen anything new cryptography wise that they're doing other than Privacy Pass. Yeah, the Privacy Pass stuff is pretty cool. I'm trying to find the. Uh... What year was it? I uh, it's they, it was the one that just happened. Uh, I'm trying to remember which one it was. Um, was it the zk? Oh, I think it was the. Um... Uh, yeah, pretty sure it was the post quantum privacy pass stuff. Zk dilithium, with an on. This, of course, being actual non creds, not Indian non creds. Yeah. I really just pretty cool stuff. I mean, they've taken basically they taken the you know the potential lattice based stuff. Um, that has been interesting, but only theoretical or semi-practical so far. And they've they've made it so it's legitimately like, okay, this is potentially actually usable. Like, I don't know. It's it was interesting. It, interesting. it was like it was the the leap forward kind of kind of presentation that I wasn't expecting for another couple of years. Like, you know, here's how we did post quantum. So when you say a non creds, what do you mean? Like with start like the privacy pass non creds. Well, those are only good one time. Right. Each privacy right. pass token is only good once. Yeah. So I was just curious what that meant. Well, it may, I don't know. Really what the presentation was on was a, a post-quantum blind signature. Ah. Okay. That, That's cool. Like an actual practical in size and scope post quantum blind signature that's what was kind of exciting about it anyway yeah real world crypto was fun this year oh i see greg nevin presented how a blockchain can keep many secrets <laughs> that looked interesting yeah i saw the time lock one yeah there was there was a I lot actually of wrote my own 
during the uh, Nevin talk. It came, it unfortunately came across more like, uh, more like an advertisement. Oh. Than like a solid thing. It was, it was a, it was a, an advertisement for the internet computer more than it was a, hey, this is cool tech kind of presentation. So that was annoying. <laughs> Bummer. Yeah. Well, I'm just curious what where we go with Ursa now because honestly, I don't I think there's existing people that like it, but I think all new stuff, no one wants it. Well, I I think that there's a lot of potential there. I think you know there's there is a solid plan to reconfigure it so that it's not as bloaty so that I can just get the pieces out that I need. Well, there's a plan, but who's doing it? Exactly. Like there was some, we've had like the PR, like the Aroha guys who were like gonna start doing it, but they're also busy doing Aroha. I'm surprised and, Aroha is even still used. I don't know of anyone that's using Aroha. <laughs> I mean, I, <clears throat> I'm gonna. I don't know how much longer I'm gonna be able to justify the time that I'm spending on it. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> so, probably I'll have to bring that up this afternoon. Yeah, me too. Well, if there's nothing else to talk about. We should probably just get 30 minutes back. We should. <laughs> Good to talk to you, though. I guess I'll see you this afternoon. All right. See you, Mike. Okay. See you. Bye.